This episode of Push to Smart contains spoilers for Telltale Games The Walking Dead Season 1 and Season 2. Hello and welcome to the Push to Smart Water Cooler. This episode we're going to be discussing Walking Dead Season 2 Episode 2 by the infamous Telltale Games... The second episode of The Walking Dead, A House Divided, finally starts to dig into what's gotten under the survivor's collective skin. Once an intimidating man named Carver casually lets slip that he knows where they're hiding, the survivors uproot and move on through the mountains, taking Clementine with them. It's a journey fraught with quick time events, surprise returning characters, and some genuine drama. And some drama that wasn't so genuine. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, I think this was definitely an improvement on the first one. Oh, I completely, completely agree. There are some things that I really loved about this episode, and there are some things that I was kind of taken aback yeah. by how much I disliked them. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so I guess starting off, you are stuck in the house alone with Sarah, and then the inevitable happens, this guy that we've only heard stories about finally shows up, and he rifles through the place. Which I thought that was and a very effective scene. Yeah. Um, you're playing, obviously, as Clementine, Home Alone. And Sarah, we kind of established in the first episode, is very naive. Um, she's kept very sheltered, whereas Clementine is used to bad guys, basically. So, so Actually, before mm-hmm. we get into that, right before this takes yeah. place, Sarah wants you to teach her how to use yes. a gun. Did you do it? I did. I did. And then when it said she's go- she knows how to defend herself, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I know, happen. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. Like, I- I'm really liking how the dynamic with Sarah is evolving. And um, mm-hmm. I don't know, the way I've been approaching it as Clementine is Clementine who d- doesn't see her as a peer, like we kind of talked about earlier. Yeah. But I think she both wants a peer and also feels responsible because of what has been imparted on her from, like, Lee. So she thinks, yes, you need to learn how to use a gun, and I'm going to show you, because that's my responsibility as part of the group. And I also really like the character moment that that created then when Sarah aims the gun at her, you know, that's, even though it's empty, just because she has no concept of how dangerous it actually is. And Clementine's yeah. reaction was just perfect. There's just so much about the series and just watching the evolution mm-hmm. and the evolution of the characters. It's, it's very... It sounds a little dorky, but it's a very enriching experience. <laughs> yeah, it's for the most part, I'll get to my grievances later, but for the most part, yes. it's a very well-written series. Yeah. And so, okay, back to... <laughs> to the house. Um, it's in the house. To the house and the bad guy yeah, coming in. Yeah, that was a great... The idea that you kind of ha- You knew that Sarah was in the house, knew this guy was possibly after her, and the way that you had to kind of try to steer him through the house him knowing full well probably that you're not supposed to be there. I was curious mm-hmm. though, did you say that you were a part of a group or did you say like you were there alone or with your dad? Oh, I definitely said I was a part of a group with a lot of Oh, people. me too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If there's something I've learned from the Walking Dead franchise as a whole, it is that you are not supposed to display weakness mm-hmm. or let them know how few people you yes. have. Yes, we have lots of people. Um, they all have guns. They are made of guns and they will kill you. <laughs> and It was really interesting, Mm -hmm. too, how, like, okay, how aggressive am I going to be? Mm -hmm. And then, so I try to pull a knife on him because (gasps) I really want him out. And it's just freaking me out a little bit. But then he's like, haha, I can put this away for you. And then, oh my gosh. I don't know, that entire scene was just so tense. I took that as him testing her to see if she really belonged with the group. Because he was like, where does this go? Which, like, was just, again, just a great little character kind of... (laughs) <laughs> moment yeah. to have. It was like, oh, man. And it made him that much more sinister, the idea that he could think this out and that he was trying yeah. to like play this game with her when she, you know, she's 11. <laughs> he could overpower her <laughs> if he wanted to. Um, yeah, I re- that was a great way to start the episode. And now I'm curious, too, because right after that, my group moved out and we went to go find the body of the survivor that was bitten that my Clementine escaped with. Um. Mm-hmm. But I know you went with the other guy whose name escapes me right now. Did you still go try to find his body? Yeah, because he wasn't dead. He was... (gasps) I've been really curious about what has happened in your playthrough because we chose such different Mm -hmm. options. But no, he, you know, he drinks, like, all the freaking Mm -hmm. whiskey in the thing. And he's, like, 
in the very beginning, when you're in the shack, mm-hmm. he's like throwing the whiskey jars at the at the door and Wait, you're um, in a shack? What? <laughs> what okay. Back the truck oh, up. No. Yeah, so they run into this shack and you know, they're basically kind of they're at the door and the z- walkers are trying to get in and uh then they you know, prop up against the door and they're just kind of waiting it oh, out. Wow. Oh wow. I'm just surprised that this doesn't actually happen in no, your game. No, it's similar but, um, though. It's filled with whiskey. <laughs> As it should be. <laughs> Jar- jars of whiskey and um or or bourbon or or one of those kind of like manly drinks. Of course. And uh, you know, Nick offers some to Clementine and that's one of your choices. Oh, that's okay. I didn't drink any. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh. I had something similar in my game. Um, when Clementine and Pete ran off, they got locked in a delivery truck for cigarettes. Huh. So instead of being offered something to drink, she was offered a cigarette. What, so that's interesting. So there, I wonder what the payoff for that's going to be if we got it in both of our games. I didn't. I chose not to have her uh. smoke, too. Though I kind of thought later, like, that might have been... Because the way I'm playing Clementine, she's, you know, very resourceful. But she's also a little bit stubborn. And she really wants to kind of prove that she can do it. Because she's... Out, yeah. Um, she wants to prove kind of that she doesn't, not necessarily that she doesn't need these people, but, you know, that she can carry her weight um, and that, you know, she's been with these other exactly. people before. Um, so I, I was almost thinking, like, maybe I should have had her do it to kind of try to prove something. Because, <laughs> you know, she is a kid, yeah. so why not? Yeah, I'm really interested yeah. to see what happens with this since we both kind of had that temptation. Obviously, it's going to lead somewhere. So, okay, so they're in the shack. Then they, you know, they have mm-hmm. to escape, but there are walkers everywhere, and um, the walkers mm-hmm. figure out that they're there. And Nick kind of oh, wow. tries to sacrifice himself. Um, he, like, throws a jar at one of the walkers' head, and he's like, go, and you can either mm-hmm. run to him or run away from him. Oh. Um, I ran to him just because I felt no mm-hmm. man left behind kind of thing. Um, but you still run away. All the stuff happens with Sarah. The people get back. And there was a group of survivors mm-hmm. who were out there looking for you two. Is this happened in your playthrough too? Yes. Okay. Um, so then all this business with Sarah, and then you go back to the shack, and he's inside. And oh, interesting. So really he stayed dumb. behind the shack, and so you guys go back to the shack to pick him up. And you just assume Pete's dead. Yes. Interesting. Okay, because yes. in my playthrough, we are in the truck with Pete. He sacrifices himself because he's already been bit. Um so Clementine can get away. At first, you know, I I, I'm, I rewatched the preview because I totally didn't forget, totally forgot it from last time. Um, and there's a point in the preview where he looks at a saw, like he's going to, you know, do something with it, maybe to cut off the leg. Um, and he almost does that in the playthrough, but he just, he chickens out because there's, we, we know from Lee, there's nothing he can do. But so yeah. he sacrifices himself. He does the same thing kind of that um, sounds like he did in your game. The idea that he, he makes a bunch of noise and you get the option to run away. And then I had the option to come. I had to lead the group back to him to see where he was. And we found him and he had just been completely torn apart. So that's what I was wondering if that was in your game. Wow. Yeah, it was. Not it was mine. pretty gory. But they also discovered that he had been shot in the head. So someone oh. else had been there. And we don't know who. Presumably, I guess we could say it was Carver's group that kind of plants this kind of extra sinister seed that I'm not sure is there when you just find him drunk in your game. Okay. So didn't you, did you have all the business on the bridge? Yes. Line? where um, Who shot Walter's partner? Your guy whose name I am still keep forgetting and wanted to call Kenny. <laughs> Pete? Pete? Uh, no, Pete's Wait, no, dead. Nick? Nick, yeah. Wait, Nick isn't dead in your playthrough? No. He met up with the group. Though, that was another interesting thing, because he met up with our group, and then we find Pete's body with him, and he gets really depressed, and is just kind of tailing along the, the very back of the group, and then when he shoots, uh, I think, is it Matthew, his partner? Uh, yeah. um, when he shoots his partner, it's kind of to prove himself and to prove how useful he is because he thinks he's threatening Clem and Luke. I think that's the other guy's name. Mm-hmm. Is that what happened in yours? Kind of. Um, he's obviously really rattled by everything yeah. that went down. And at that point, he's kind of like trying to prove mm-hmm. himself. It seems to me that he feels like, you know, Clementine is kind of on his mm-hmm. side. It's really interesting because it seems like in my game that he feels like everyone's against him and that it's his mm-hmm. fault that Pete's dead. 
And so that was the impression at least I got. Obviously, it's probably the same exact dialogue and animations mm. and everything. So that's really interesting that it changes how dramatically yeah. we read that scene. So I guess that brings us to the... Um, obviously, that was one of the things I was wondering about if Matthew's partner was killed in both games, which obviously he is. Poor Matthew. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I guess that takes us to when we meet up with his greater group, who has the surprise character, who is not Lily. Not Lily at all. Not even a little bit. Nope. <laughs> not even a little bit. So what was your response to having it be Kenny? <laughs> Part of me, um, I was really surprised, and actually I, I was happier than I mm-hmm. thought I would ever be to see him. But at the same time, there's part of me that was like, this feels kind of cheap. Like, how did he just leave that scene that I left him in at the end of the first <laughs> season? <laughs> and he's just like, hey, I left. Which, um, and he's totally okay with being abandoned by the team. But um, one of the things, I'm wondering if we're going to get a little bit more into that. Because there's all this talk with the other survivors. How he's, there's something that's just mm. not quite right about him. And there's, at least in my game, did you choose to sit with him at dinner? That was one of the most difficult decisions. And it was so silly! I know. (laughs) But I chose sitting with him, because I was like, okay, I'd catch up. So did he call you duck? Yes. By accident? Yeah. So I'm wondering if this is gonna escalate at some point. I know. Well, as soon as I saw it was Kenny, like, I got very emotional. Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised. I I was like, Kenny's back. (laughs) And And I didn't even like the character that much. I know. I know, and just seeing him, like, kind of happy, but then as it goes on, Mm -hmm. that starts to wear off, and you're kind of like, ah, it's the same old freaking Kenny. And one thing Mm -hmm. that I am really disappointed in Mm -hmm. is when he kind of starts bad-mouthing Ben, it's like, you were ready to sacrifice your life for this guy, maybe don't call him a bumbling idiot or something, you know? That's what I'm wondering if that's part of what's not quite right about him. If maybe he's forgotten some things, like some of the more traumatic parts of his experience, and that's why he slips up and calls her duck, or um, is overcompensating with his positive attitude. In my game, he mentioned that, you know, Lee helped kill duck. Oh, wait, you killed duck in your playthrough? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember if I did. I don't think he said that to me. And, you know, by the time I was done sitting with Kenny and having a meal, I was Mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm ready to be with the other group now. (laughs) But then um, they drop that bomb on you when they figure out that Matthew, that the guy that you killed on the bridge, or that Nick killed, was actually part of the group. Mm -hmm. And that you took the knife. Like, that was also a great dramatic moment. Yeah. Uh, You know, admittedly, I thought that the episode was going to end Mm -hmm. with him... With, Playing with a knife? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I thought that was going to be the cliffhanger. And I was like, that would have been a brilliant <laughs> cliffhanger. Um, but then the episode just kept going. Yeah. <laughs> um, which isn't a bad thing. I was yeah. just surprised. And um, d- were you able to save Nick? I was. I didn't even okay. realize you couldn't save him. That's did you I- save Carlos after Carver came in? I did. Okay. I'm well, not sure if Carlos can die, but... Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure if he can either. It seems like he's going to be an important character, but then mm-hmm. I would have assumed, like, Walter would have been. And Walter just gets shot. Yeah. Which seemed like a missed opportunity. hmm It's like, he exists only to forgive or kill Nick, and then he's dead. The two gay characters. Yeah! They just what die is, yeah. in the same episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which sucks because Matthew was so cool. Mm-hmm. He was just like, "Hey guys, <laughs> I got lots of food. Let's do. Let's let's have a campfire." Even though he only had a can, um, yeah. But yeah, I, I know. He had the lodge. <laughs> so we should probably kind of go back and explain, like, um, while you're at the lodge, Carver's group catches up with you. And one of the more interesting things about it was that Carver's group includes Bonnie from Four Hundred Days. I know. And I actually really liked Bonnie from yeah. 400 Days. But when I saw her, I was like, nothing good can come from this. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Which that I thought that was really interesting, too. Because one of the things that was just really weird about 400 Days is that it just kind of plopped you in the middle of a story and didn't tell you anything. Mm-hmm. So, like, with Bonnie, for example, you're just walking through the woods with this guy. He kind of hits on you. So you, because it's a game, might flirt back. But then it's like, oh, he has a wife. Which yeah. Bonnie, the character, would know this, but you as the player are purposely left in the dark about it. Mm-hmm. And then that kind of 
accumulates in when you're dropped in as this woman trying to recruit all the survivors from 400 Days to join her group. Mm-hmm. You have no idea what kind of community she's actually from, but you're kind of forced to make this make up this pitch to kind of recruit them, even though you have no idea what you're doing. And I thought for sure that the game was going to end with like a tag where I find out that I've actually lured them to their deaths or something, you know? Yeah, it <laughs> but, was... And now it looks like it's going to be Carver's group, and that's what we were kind of trying to pitch at them in that game, which is really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. And although I will say about Bonnie, mm-hmm. it kind of felt like she was reluctant, because mm-hmm. when you're giving her the big box of food, she's like, this is too much. I, I was wondering if maybe if I'd played my cards differently, if she would have turned on Carver, mm-hmm. or if she will in the future. That was one of the things I was interested to see in the variations. Yeah. So did you, when um, Bonnie and Carver and their group have everybody kind of lined up, did you, and they've shot Walter, did, did you leave to try to find Kenny, or did you um, stay to help Carlos? I stayed to help Carlos, because I too. was like, too many people have died, all the gays are gone, right. we need to save one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but apparently, if you go after Kenny, you'll see him kind of shooing Luke away. Oh. Yeah. And Luke Weird. kind of leaves. So Luke where, leaves the group? Yeah, like, you know, he and Kenny are doing the generator thing. Oh, and weird. So in my game, I was like, oh, thank God, at least Luke is a way to come save us. Mm-hmm. But if you go after Kenny and Luke, apparently it's a bit more dire in that Luke Weird. is just kind of done with the group and leaves. I also thought this was interesting in the choices when it displays them all at the end of the game. It I don't know if the previous episodes have done this. I never noticed this before, but it In assigns... In retrospect, they did. But I, it was the first time I noticed it as well. That they have, like, assigned names to every yeah. choice. So, like, le- leaving to find Kenny is classified as bravery. I was not. Yeah, me neither, apparently. But mm-hmm. um, 63% of us, when I played, were not. So, there. This is also, <laughs> like, I think... I usually play the games, right, where they come out, and it's usually skewed heavily one way or the other. But this one, they were all, like, 50%, 63%, 60%. Like, they all kind of towed that middle ground. Yeah. Like, people were really divided <laughs> <laughs> on, like, what to do, which is quite telling and quite interesting. Mm-hmm. One thing I kind of want to talk about was Rebecca. I think it's Rebecca. Is she the, the pregnant character? Yes. I have a lot of problems with her. What part of it is I just don't believe the whole like narrative thrust that Carver is pursuing them just because she's pregnant. Like that's just so silly and it was kind of funny cuz when you're talking with Luke about it and he's like what would a man, you know, what does a man value as, as so much? Oh, I book? loved that part. Yeah, I played chose dumb. everything but it. Me too. <laughs> I, and it was funny because it was like I was I chose it I chose to play dumb originally just because I was mad at the at the, this plot line. I didn't think it was good enough, mm-hmm. and it ended up being a really nice kind of sad character moment for Clementine, yeah. where it's like she, what does she value most? Safety and food, because this is the world that she's in, and yeah. it, and, and Luke even looks kind of sad. Yeah. And it was just, and it originally, I just chose it because I was mad at the plot. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it and ended up being really nice. Yeah, I don't know. Rebecca's character, she like, the entire first mm-hmm. episode, she was the angry black woman trope. Yeah. And at the very beginning of the second episode, she was the same way, and she kind of started to open up a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it was weird that she was opening up, and she even says, why am I talk- saying this to an 11-year-old? Yeah. And it's like, why are you saying this to an 11-year-old? <laughs> like, Please explain yourself. Honestly, when I was playing through the episode, I was like, who is this other guy, her husband? I know. Was he here last episode? I don't think he was here last episode. He reminds me of Cyril from Archer. <laughs> like, he is so bumbling. Um, yeah. But one thing I wanted to kind of get in about Rebecca is I feel like, and this might be me reading into too much into it like I tend to do, but um, the way I'm playing it is that she's kind of, she could be read as a double for Krista. Mm-hmm. And the idea that probably, the idea that she's pregnant and the last time we see Krista, she was previously pregnant, just lost the baby. And I feel like that is a potential, not to be totally overwrought and overdramatic, but the idea that that could be a, a potential kind of route for drama and kind of strife between her and Clementine. Because mm-hmm. the idea that Clementine just went through all this, and the idea, like, even Rebecca asked her about a name right after Omid asked her the exact same question in the first game, or in the first episode. Yeah. 
And it might be a trigger for a flashback to see what happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm really wondering if that's going to pay off in some way, because it seems like it, it should. Yeah. <laughs> and that's definitely the way I'm playing it. I'm playing Clementine is very distrusting of her, A, because she was mean, and <laughs> B, because she did just go through this with people yeah. she actually liked. And we saw how that turned out. So. Yeah. So I'm still enjoying it. Yeah, me too. There are some decisions that I'm not as excited about, Mm -hmm. like we talked about with Kenny and whatnot. Um, And I don't know. I really, I really wanted this Carver business to be over. Like, there was so little of it, but I'm still just kind of like, I'm already sick of it. I don't know why, but it's just not really ringing with me. That's just so funny that we both had the same reaction to that. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like, I don't care. Like, if you're going to a compound or whatever that has a bad ruler i don't know i I realize that carver book ended the episode in the Mm -hmm. beginning he was the threat in the end he was the threat but like 75 percent of the way through the episode it felt like we were on to something new already Mm -hmm. yeah i thought it would be like carver would just kind of be motivating them and kind of maybe a boogeyman for most of it while they encountered other things Mm -hmm. and i was kind of surprised but like um in the preview it looks like he was I don't know, taking a special interest in Clementine and showing her all about how, like, the society works and stuff. And it's like, why would he do this? Yeah. And in my review, I'm, like, people were being rude to the group. But, you know, Carver was like, oh, they still have a chance to find their place here. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that's very governor. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, he's governor 2.0 or, yeah, yeah, kind of putting on that face. I guess we'll just see where it goes. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I I thought this episode, for the most part, was pretty good. Yeah. So thank you for listening to the Push to Smart Water Cooler. What did you think about the episode? Did you expect Kenny to come back? What choices did you make? How did you feel about them? Let us know. You can talk it out. Put it in the comment section, please. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on our latest episodes and water cooler discussions. Hey, kid. Look, it's not like I don't know you have guts, but are you crazy? Maybe I am. Just stick with the plan, okay?